right, this little fellow, Mr. Shaw, the uh, screw for my number three horning guide, and uh, produced some. Basically, just set up this afternoon. I'm going to produce a few hundred of these, and um, the shank size itself, the shaft size is point. Let me see, point zero five down from five mil. We produce the hole with a five mil drill, which is pretty well unworn from a drill jig, and I need to have it a clearance fit, but I don't want too much slop and I want as much metal on that shank as I can for strength. So I'm working at 0 0.05 down from 5 mil, which will give us a, a working clearance. Now I know from experience that this Ward 1A capstan lathe, and I've achieved it this afternoon, can achieve a tolerance of plus or minus 0 0.01, which is quite good. That's less than a total deviation of a thousandth of an inch. A thousandth of an inch is 0 0.0254. So that's 495, 0 0.05 down from 5 mil. It's 495, which will rise up to 496 max, 494 minimum. So it's 495 nominal size. And uh, everything I produce in the workshop is to, to a tolerance. You cannot do anything else. If these are assembled in a few months or a year's time and you've got a whole tray of hundreds of these you need to work on, you've got to know that one will work in the other. It's impossible to do anything else. And the whole idea of interchangeability uh, was developed, well, particularly by Eli Whitney on the east coast of America in the early part of the 19th century. I think particularly to do with small arms manufacture. Uh, the old story is that uh, you could take 50 rifles apart, jumble them up in a bag, and hopefully 50 should fit together again at random. But I think even at that point there may have been a, a bit of craft fitting, fine tuning to get things to work right. Um, you can get all sorts of things. Here we are, I've just found this. This is a little uh, engineer's pocket book. And you, there are, let me see, according to uh, BS4500, we would do this on te Technical College 30 something years ago. Um, here we have a system of limits and fits where it obviously shows you that in large diameter articles you need a, quite a large tolerance, or you could accommodate a large tolerance. And obviously on smaller sized articles you'd need to work on a finer tolerance, possibly, for such conditions as an easy running fit or a close running fit or a light press fit or a heavy interference fit, whatever you want to work on. Those are the old-fashioned terms, uh, but they're still applicable because that's what uh, the man in the workshop will end up producing, a working fit, an interference fit, or a solid drive fit, whatever he wants. Um, so I can tell I'm wondering now because I don't exactly know my subject anymore. <laughs> anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Everything's made to a tolerance in this place.